only have the blessings of God through who? Jesus Christ. And if it is going to be through Jesus Christ, then our sins must first of all be covered. Hello everyone. Uh, I'd like us to read the Bible from Psalms chapter 32, verse 1 and 2. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. I'll read together with Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man, unto whom God imputes righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. This time around, let us to take this next level on what I call what are spiritual blessings. What are spiritual blessings? We have established the fact that the blessings of God are spiritual. They are spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. But what are these spiritual blessings? I would like to begin by saying that the blessings of God cannot directly be defined. They can only be described. You know, you cannot define spiritual things. The same way you cannot erase the Spirit of God and say, pass through this direction, right? So the Spirit of God cannot be, you know, arrested by man. You cannot erase it. So he stays with also spiritual blessings. Spiritual blessings cannot be defined. You know, some people, when you ask, oh, what is spiritual blessing? They want you to give direct answer. Just like kindergarten teaching, you know? What is science? Science is the study of living and non-living things. So when you look at this, there is no place in the Bible that can now define spiritual blessings exactly. But what God does to us is by describing, describing spiritual blessings, explaining spiritual blessings. And that is why I would like us to take note of that. And for us to be able to know this, I'll will share with us some of these descriptions. Like we have read in those two different passages, you know, how David began to describe, you know, the blessedness of a man, the spiritual blessings that God has intended for a man. So in this session, the first description of the blessed man is the one whose sins are covered. The one whose sins are covered. When you read this kind of word, what comes to you? Bible says, whose sins are covered. So if God says, whose sins are covered, this is not in the sense of, you know, you can't say, for instance, you look at this, and then you, bring, you put it here, and then you cover it. Eh? I've covered this marker. So the, this marker is still existing, but I've only covered it. So many people think like this. So even when the Bible says, whose sins are covered, that does not mean God brought something to cover your sin. So this covering is not in the sense of you know, hiding it from being seen. No. This covering is 
in the sense of clearing it. Therefore, we can also say, blessed is the man whose sins have been cleared, covered. You know, for instance, if you are indebted, you have some debt somewhere, hmm? and, then, and then somebody clears the debt for you. So you can also say, okay, my debts have been covered. My debts have been cleared. So when you read the Bible and it brings that word, your sins have been covered, you don't take it with this natural understanding that, okay, my sins are covered. That means my sins are still somewhere, you know, they are somewhere and God brought Jesus to only cover my sin. So Jesus is covering my sin. Jesus is not a covering material for your sin. He's not like a blanket that you used to cover something. Ah, it's not like that. So when we are talking about covering, we are simply talking about it in the sense of clearing it. So God is saying, blessed is the man whose sins are covered, whose sins are cleared. <clears throat> now listen to this. We are made to understand from the book of Romans, chapter 4, no, chapter 5, verse 12, and then verse 19. We are meant to understand that sin entered into the world. <clears throat> this is the world. Then sin entered. Sin entered into the world. And because sin entered into the world, the man that the Lord God had put there became a sinner. So sin entered into the world, and because sin entered into the world, man became a sinner. So man did not become a sinner because he commits sin. That is why you know, the judgment of sin by God is different from the judgment of sin by man. You see? When sin entered, we became sinners. And because we became sinners, you know, <clears throat> God departed from us, or we departed from God because we became sinners. We did not become sinners because we are committing sin. We only became sinners because sin entered. That's why we don't have to take responsibility of our sin. The Bible says, blessed is the man whose sins are covered, not the man who covers himself, his, his own sin by himself. But blessed is the man whose sins are covered. Somebody else covered it. So now when sin entered and man became a sinner, <clears throat> man lost the glory of God. Man lost the blessings of God. Man could no longer now stand before the Lord. So because of that, God decided to curse man. You remember the story in Genesis chapter 3? When God, after, after the sin of Adam had manifested, had been revealed, God decided to curse the ground. He decided to curse the ground for the sake of man that had committed sin, that had been found in sin. So when God cast this man, this ground, now it is this ground that acted as the material or provided the material that made man. So out of the ground, the Lord God made man. So man, because of sin, he became cast. So God cast the ground. In other words, God cast man. Therefore, after generations and generations, all human beings who have come to exist on the earth, they came through this one man called Adam. Therefore, all of them are descendants of Adam. We all are descendants of Adam. So all the descendants of Adam are caste people. They are all under curses. 
Curses are not, you know, when things are not working for you, you know, sometimes people call generational curses. What do people call generational curses? Where is it here written in the Bible? Even the word generational curses may not be there. But what the Bible teaches us is the curse of God which came upon man because of sin. So curse came upon man because of sin, not because of parents. Not because of the conduct of your grandfathers. The curses that fell on the man was because of sin. So sin became the root cause for the curses of man. Now God cast man. Man lost his presence. Man lost his glory. <clears throat> and he could now only occupy the, the cast places. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 <clears throat> verse 7. Out of the ground the Lord God formed this man. <clears throat> He formed this man. But even though he had formed this man, you know, <clears throat> the curses that prevailed, prevailed upon that man. So man became a cursed thing. And all the children of that man, all the grandchildren of that man, the descendants, all in that line, they all fell under the same curse of God. <clears throat> now, because man was now cursed as a result of sin, Man could not help himself. Man became desperately helpless. That is why now there is no need for another person to come into the world. Because man was now wallowing in the atmosphere of sin, in the world of sin. Now, man could not help himself inside sin. The same way when you are drowned inside water, you cannot come out by yourself, you cannot help yourself. You now need someone else to come and save you. So that's what exactly happened. Jesus had to come into the world to save man from sin. Now, let's check out from scriptures. In Galatians chapter 3, <clears throat> let's look at it. In Galatians chapter 3, Let's see the heart of God towards this whole thing. Verse 13 and verse 14. The Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from what? The curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles through who? Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through what? Faith. Now, Jesus came to this world to become a curse for us. So that we now, through him, might receive the blessings of Abraham. The blessings of the father. Abraham here is the father. Abraham represents God here. Right? So that we might receive the blessings of the father through what? Through Jesus Christ. That means there is no any other way through which we can receive these spiritual blessings except through Jesus Christ. So the blessings of God can only be received through Jesus Christ. After we have been delivered from the curses of life. After we have been covered from our sin. There's no man, there's no pastor, there's no bishop, no, no reverend. Who can deliver you from curses? Who can deliver you from sin? Only Jesus Christ can deliver you from sin. Only Jesus Christ can deliver you from the curses of the law. Now, that is what the Bible says. Now, these spiritual blessings that we are talking about, they are not earned. The spiritual blessings the Bible talks about can only be received. So we are only receivers of the blessings of God. We are not earners. We are not earners. You know, without knowing this exactly from the Bible, people try to do so many things to receive the blessings of God, to earn it. So they have the earning mentality instead of having the receiving mentality. 
God does not want us to have this you know, earning mentality. You know what you earn is what you have worked for, you have labored for, you have done something about it. And when you do something about it, then you must just be paid. You earn it. But according to God, you are not supposed to earn these blessings. You are not qualified to have it. There is nothing in you that you can put in place for God to be able to bless you spiritually. All God wants us to, to do is to have a receiving mentality. That's where there is the grace of God. And that's why he says that we might receive. We might receive through who? Jesus Christ. We might receive through Jesus Christ. Now that means if we need the blessings of God, then we can only have the blessings of God through who? Jesus Christ. And if it is going to be through Jesus Christ, then our sins must first of all be covered. Our sins must first of all be covered. Our sins must first of all be covered. Because we understand when sin entered into the world, like we have said, you know, man became a sinner. And the other thing that happened also, God closed heaven. God closed heaven. He closed heaven against man. So man began to operate under closed heaven. Because of sin, God did not want to relate with man anymore. God could not flow to man anymore. So the heaven was closed. The heaven was closed. We can check that one from 2 Chronicles chapter 6. 2 Chronicles chapter 6. The Bible says in verse 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 26. The Bible says, when the heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee. Because they have sinned against thee. Yet if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou, did it, when thou dost afflict them. What does the Bible say here? When the heaven is shut up. And there is no rain. Because of what? They have sinned. Because they have sinned. So when man sinned because he was made a sinner, heaven was closed. Heaven was closed against us not because we don't pray. Not because Satan is stronger than us. No. Heaven was closed because of sin. And we know this story in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, when Jesus, through the baptism of John, Jesus came out of the water after that exercise, after that episode, after Jesus had carried the sin of the world, all the sin of the world put on Jesus, transferred on Jesus through the baptism of John, what happened? Heaven opened. Heaven opened. The Bible says, and heaven was opened. And there came a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son. Now, when sin departed from us, God opened heaven. He opened heaven. More than 2,000 years ago, heaven was what? Opened. And when God opened heaven, you know, then it means God's heart was opened towards man. The opening of heaven simply represents the opening of the heart of God to flow towards man. So when sin is removed from the cast man, God can't but to flow his heart towards that man. In other words, spiritual blessings therefore are the flow of God's heart towards the righteous, towards the sinless, towards those whose sins have been covered. When the heart of God flows to you, you may not see it, you may not touch it, but that flow of the heart of God towards you, you may begin to experience God because of the flow of his heart. So when our sins are covered, then the heart of God begins to flow to us. 
The blessings of God are just the flow of the heart of God towards us. And what an amazing thing when the heart of God is flowing towards you. Such an amazing thing. When the heart of God flows towards you, you can only be peaceful. You can only have joy. You can only have peace. You can only have the hope of your salvation when the heart of God flows to you. This is very important. So when we are talking about spiritual blessings, you cannot talk about spiritual blessings without regards to the heart of God. When the heart of God opens to us, we can't but to be blessed. We can't but to flow and experience the things of our Father God. This is very, very important. Very, very important. This is very, very important. Now, how are our sins covered? This is also yet another important question. Okay, we have realized that spiritual blessings are when our sins are covered, when our sins are clear. But the other question is, how then are our sins covered? How? Hmm? How can you get your sins covered? Some people think for you to be able to get your sins covered, you know, you have to ask God for forgiveness. Ask God for forgiveness. I remember my own story before. You know, I was a trained missionary pastor in the religious, sex, you know, religious group. You know, I was a religious pastor before, you know. <laughs> so we used to, you know, guide people, make people to think that, okay, you know, you can ask God for forgiveness because we had not understood this dimension of the gospel. We had not understood the true gospel. So we could only tell people, you know, you have to ask God for forgiveness. Ask him to forgive you. So I could guide many people, you know, just, oh Lord, forgive my sins. Even the one I committed in the morning, forgive again. So you go back to the same thing and then tomorrow, when you're guilty of something again, again, God, forgive me. So when are you going to be free from sin? So God is not in the business of covering, covering, covering sin. No. The sin was covered. The sin was covered. So how do you get this sin covered? It's not by asking for forgiveness of sin. It's not by apologizing to God. It's not by, you know, confessing your sin. No. How do you get your sin covered? You know, most people think that for your sins to be covered, you need to ask God for forgiveness. Sins are not taken on the ticket of asking for forgiveness. I was, I was reading this Bible, but I have never come across any story here that points to the fact that when we ask God for forgiveness of our sins, he will definitely cover our sins. This is, people see God in this dimension, but that's not the God of the Bible. No, the God of the Bible, the Bible says, is a righteous judge. Is a righteous judge. What does that mean? God keeps to his word. He keeps to his terms. Now, when it comes to sin, what God had decided to do was to judge sin. When sin came into the world, made man a sinner, man was judged by God. What was the judgment of, that, of, of the sinner? What's the judgment? What is the statement of God's judgment to sinners? The wages of sin is death. Yes. So God concluded that he that is a sinner must die. So the wages of sin is what? Is death. So that is why Jesus, when he came here, he became a curse. How? He took your place. He paid for your sin. Jesus paid for the punishment of your sin. So instead of you being punished and as a result end up in hellfire, Jesus became one for you. So it became a sin offering for you to be cleared of sin. So through the sacrifice of himself, you know, on the cross, he died, he was buried, and then he rose up again. This process all combinate into what we call the works of Jesus. So through the works of Jesus, we were cleared from sin. Through the works of Jesus, we were what? Cleared from sin. Jesus works the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Through this process, you know, we were able to be transferred from being cursed to being blessed. So what happens now if we believe in 
the works of Jesus, that is what he has done for us more than 2,000 years ago, we will receive the faith, and through the faith which we receive, we will be able to access spiritual blessings. So this spiritual blessing can only be accessed through Jesus Christ. That is, if we can believe the works of Jesus. What does it mean to believe in Jesus? To believe in Jesus means to simply receive his word. Receive his word. To believe in the works he has accomplished for us. Jesus has accomplished the work for us. More than 2,000 years ago, we were freed from the domain of sin. We were freed from the domain of curses. And now that we have been freed, we can't but to be blessed. My friend, I trust God. He's going to guide our heart to realize this exactly. So that the heart of God can begin to flow to us who were once strangers. But now through the offering of Jesus Christ, we have been accepted into the family of the beloved where we can't but to only be blessed. That is my hope and that's my prayer. So thank you very much. If you say sometimes good is only in your eyes, but in the sight of God, you as a human being, you are only evil. I am only evil. Key issues to forgiveness of sin and being born again. Are you struggling in darkness with shame, pain and fear? Do you know that all this can turn around through the forgiveness of sin alone? No need to struggle. Be the first to unveil the secret. The clear truth about forgiveness of sin is hidden in the Bible, disclosed in this book, The Secret of Forgiveness of Sin and Being Born Again. Take a step towards living your full potential by getting your own copy. The book goes for 580 Kenya shillings. To get a copy of this, contact the numbers on your screen. Many a times we pray to God to forgive our sins. But what happens when you don't have faith that our sins have been forgiven? Pastor Oxo Park's book, Repentance and Faith, enlightens us more on how to go about it, referring to specific situations in the Bible. To get a copy of this book, please visit Achania Bookshop along Moy Avenue at only 580 shillings.